Hello, this lecture is going to be on teleological ethics. This is the final ethical theory we'll be considering for the semester in Faiths and Values, and it's a little bit of a tricky one, so try to keep up. So when we talk about teleological ethics, there's actually, this is actually a broad category of ethics. There are a number of different ethical theories that can be considered teleological. Um, and so I wanna just focus on one particular one, um, that of Thomas Aquinas. So I talk about this as Thomas's teleological ethics. So uh, let me quickly draw you a picture of Thomas Aquinas so you can uh, have something to imagine as you're thinking about this. And, okay, so this is Thomas Aquinas. That's what he looked like. And his theory of ethics uh, involved this sort of teleological thinking. Um, we already talked about Thomas Aquinas with virtue ethics. He also was a Christian theologian and drew upon divine command. Um, however, uh, this was another aspect of his ethical thinking uh, that he drew from Aristotle and, and influenced uh, how he taught people how they should behave. So let me give you a little bit of help with this slide. Okay, so Thomas Aquinas, uh, probably the most important Roman Catholic theologian ever, or at least in the top few, uh, lived in the 13th century. Um, and so we're gonna be talking about his teleological ethics, his approach to teleological ethics. So you'll notice that the, the word teleological comes from the Greek word telos, and the telos refers to the end or the goal or the aim of an action. And so every action has an end, a goal, an aim, a purpose. And when it comes to acting in a morally virtuous way, you, whenever you're engaged in any particular action, you want to make sure that you are permitting or allowing that telos to be reached. You don't wanna do something that will artificially interfere with that action reaching its telos. Now that probably sounds a little odd. Uh, maybe you're not sure what that means. And so I think with uh, this type of ethics, the best way to do this is with um, a, a few examples. So we're gonna look at a few different examples of teleological ethics um, in action. Um, but remember the idea is every action has a proper end or purpose or telos, and you don't wanna do anything that will interfere uh, with that action being reached. You can't completely control whether that action, uh, that, uh, that result will happen, rather the telos will be reached, but you don't wanna do anything to interfere with it, and you wanna make sure that you're acting in a way that would permit or allow that uh, to happen, certainly. So the first example that we're going to look at is the action of eating. So when it comes to eating, what is the telos of eating? Well, um, the telos of eating is nutrition, right? That's why we eat. That's the purpose and the end of eating is to, uh, to, to nourish our bodies so that we have healthy bodies. That's why eating exists. That's the telos of, uh, of eating. So when it comes to the way that we eat, um, if you are eating in a way that permits your body to be properly nourished, then that's good. That's what you want to do. If, however, you're eating in such a way uh, that you're preventing your body from being nourished, if you are eating too much, if you're eating the wrong things, if you are um, yeah, not eating the right things, then that's a moral issue, right? If, if you are, are not eating in a way that brings about the nourishment of the body, um, then that's a moral issue, that's a moral problem. Now, if you have a tapeworm, you're not responsible for that, right? Uh, we're not talking about situations where you can't control this, uh, the result, but insofar as you can permit or allow nourishment to take place. Now, you can pick from lots of different foods. You can you know, order what you want off the menu, and so you can pick some foods that you're gonna like more than others, and some things you will like more than others. Uh, and that's fine, and you can add spices and flavors and all of that, and that, that's great, but don't eat in such a way that you are preventing your body from being nourished. So that's how it would work uh, with regard to eating. Now, if we take a look at another example, uh, education. So we're gonna look at going to college, right? I actually gave away the answer already. Right. So going to college, right? What is the telos of going to college? The telos of going to college is not to get a job, 
right? The college can't control that, right? The telos of going to college is to get an education. That's why you go to college. And hopefully that will open up to you professional opportunities, but you go to college, you attend classes um, in order to get an education. Now, again, just like with eating, you can pick from different schools, you can pick from different majors, you can take different courses with different professors, um, and that's all fine and good. And you can do different things while you're at college, right? Um, you can join different clubs and play sports and play in the orchestra and all sorts of different things. Um, and as long as none of that is interfering with your getting an education, then you're fine. Um, if, however, you do something that interferes with you getting an education, right? Um, if your participation in a club or a sorority or um, in the jazz quartet is interfering with you getting an education, then you've got a problem. Uh, so again, make sure that as you are attending college and doing all those college things that you're not doing anything that will interfere with your ability to get an education. So you can see how that plays out as well. Okay, so you're getting the, the hang of how this works. Uh, we're just gonna use another example or two to get the idea across. So the next one that we have to talk about is sex. All right, what should we show? Okay, so sex, right? What is the telos of sex? The telos of sex, why does sex exist? What's its purpose? Procreation, right? That's why sex exists. Um, and so it's the same situation, right? Um, you should not be doing anything when it comes to sex. And sex has its proper context, right? Um, but uh, you should not be doing anything when it comes to sex that would interfere with procreation, right? That's the purpose, that's the end, that's the goal of sex. Um, and so you don't want to do anything that would interfere with procreation. And so what would that include? That would include birth control, artificial birth control. And so um, now if you put a few things together in your head, you can understand why I'm talking to you about all of this, right? So Thomas Aquinas was a Roman Catholic theologian, and you may be aware that Roman Catholics, uh, not all of them, but the hierarchy and many people in Roman Catholicism have had a problem with birth control, with artificial birth control. And so why is that? Well, the reason is that because it interferes with the telos of sex. And sex, just like eating and education, um, has its proper telos, and so you should always be at least permitting or allowing that to take place. Right? It doesn't mean that you have to um, have kids every time you have sex, um, but you don't want to do anything that would stand in the way of that. Uh, if a, if a, a man or a woman is infertile, um, that doesn't change it because it's not their action. Right? You're responsible for your own actions. So it's not the result that matters. Um, it is your intention to interfere with the telos that can become a moral issue. Okay. So there's a, uh, a few others um, that we could talk about here as well. Um, hunting, right? Uh, so when it comes to hunting, why do people go hunting? What is the telos of hunting? Food, right? That's why you go and you hunt and you kill animals. And so purely trophy hunting would raise some moral issues. Um, if you're eating the animal, if you're eating the deer, uh, and then getting its head mounted on the wall, that one might be fine um, because you're not interfering with the telos of procuring meat uh, and eating. Um, another one uh, that we could consider here, um, oh no, that's all I've got there. So anyway, um, I, you see how this works there. Uh, so when you're considering how to live your life, Make sure that the actions that you are engaged in uh, are open to the proper telos uh, that they uh, can receive. So sometimes this can get a little tricky though, because with some actions we ask, so what is the telos, right? What is the telos of a particular action? <clears throat> and so um, one uh, that if we, if we uh, continue along the lines of this discussion of sexuality, um, one would be to ask, well, how far does this extend? And so masturbation is an issue that comes up. And so the Roman Catholic Church, right, uh, looks to, uh, to Thomas Aquinas for guidance, um, has had disagreements on this. So what is the telos of masturbation? Is it a sexual act? And if it is a sexual act, then it might be considered immoral. And there have been Catholics who've looked at that as an immoral act, because masturbation is a sexual act, and sexual acts are for the purpose of procreation. Um, on the other hand, um, there are those who would um, 
look at this a little bit differently and would say, no, that masturbation is not a sexual act per se. It's, it's, a, it's a release of tension or something along those lines, and it's acceptable. Uh, so many years ago when I was dating um, the woman who would become my wife, um, we went to church. We went to a, a Roman Catholic mass. And while we were there, uh, they were doing the um, confession of sins. And it was a rather unusual uh, service that day. And so they had a group at the front who was chanting through the litany of sins. And as they would talk about different sins, the congregation would respond, Lord, have mercy. And as they were chanting this, the whole thing rhymed. And this is a, you know, the idea of the confession of sins and the request, Lord, have mercy, um, is a normal thing in Catholic churches. And so I was going along with that, and uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time um, and I were standing there um, and, uh, and, and going along with the confession of sins. And they would say, you know, for sins of being pride, you know, for sins of, of pride and acting snide, and then the congregation would respond, Lord have mercy. And for sins of being a jerk or not always being on time to work, and we would all respond, Lord have mercy. Uh, and then they threw one at me that was a bit of a surprise, and they said, and for sins of procrastination and masturbation, and I stopped, and I was kind of surprised by that, and I didn't say anything, and I didn't say the Lord have mercy part, and um, I was just kind of surprised that that had been brought up, and uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time um, elbowed me in the side, looked at me, and was like, hey, what are you doing? You procrastinate. You should also be saying, Lord have mercy. Um, so I just remember thinking, well, this is sort of unusual. You know, I've never heard masturbation chanted at a, at a Catholic mass before. Um, but it gets to the idea that uh, in Catholicism, right, what's the objection to these things? What's the objection to birth control? What's the objection to masturbation when it exists? Not all Catholics agree on that. Um, that uh, it's not about divine command, right? The Bible doesn't condemn masturbation. The Bible doesn't condemn birth control. If you look up the story of Onan, that's about something different. Um, and so Catholics' objection to those things is based on this type of ethical theory, not divine command. So whether or not you agree with that, whether or not um, if you're a Catholic, you want to go along with that, that's all up to you. But it's important that you understand the ethical reasoning that people are using. So um, again, there is this question as you're trying to apply um, teleological or Thomas's teleological ethics uh, to different situations, how it plays out, what is the uh, telos of different actions. So for example, I was thinking about this today. What's the telos of coffee? I was just figuring it must be the uh, the energy that the caffeine gives you, right? That's uh, that's why you drink coffee. And if that's true, then decaffeinated coffee must be the work of the devil, right? You're taking something out of coffee. Um, and as you know from Thomas's theology, right, being and, and goodness are all sort of worked up together. And so, uh, yeah, if you're taking something out of the coffee, you're taking out caffeine, you're interfering with the telos, you're taking away from its essence, its being, and therefore its goodness. Decaffeinated coffee is the work of the devil. It's not me, it's the Pope. Anyway, um, so it can be a little tricky to figure out the telos. People aren't always going to agree on that. Um, but that's our, our very brief introduction to Thomas's teleological ethics. Uh, whether or not you wanna use that in your life, that's up to you, uh, but it's important that you understand how others engage in their moral reasoning so you at least understand the conclusions that they're coming to and why they're coming to those conclusions. So that's it for today. Have a good week and be safe.